Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of Let's Play Skyrim. Last time we escaped from Helgen Keep with Hadvar and now we're basically free to do as we see fit. Uh, our first goal though is probably to get to the nearest town and offload all of our junk so we can start moving at full speed again. But it's going to go slowly because there are a lot of alchemy ingredients to gather on the way down to Riverwood. So join me for this little journey, and then the fun will really start. Let's stay in sneak mode. To the left of the path is a snowberry bush. I ultimately need to create a whopping... I'm doing some math in my head. 29 potions of fortify enchanting as part of my crafting cycle. And... As you may or may not know, snowberries are one of the ingredients that can be used to create such potions. So I'm going to hoard those snowberries, but let's peek at them right quick. They weigh one-tenth of a pound with a value of four. All four effects are currently unknown. There's a second snowberry bush to the right of the path over here somewhere, if I can just find it. There it is. I prefer to use snowberries and blue butterfly wings for my fortify enchanting potions. There's two snowberries. 27 to go. Hadvar's kind of sticking close to us for now, but he'll eventually take off, because he's on a timer. And if we w take too long, he just takes off on his own. But it is worth pointing out that, unlike before, we are now actually sneaking. So if we ever manage to get undetected, we will actually gain some experience. Just trying to keep my eyes peeled to make sure I don't miss any ingredients on the way down. And over here, I see a thistle branch. I think I just saw a bunny or a fox go tear it across the path. There it goes. It's a bunny. He can shoot those. Almost certainly die and give you some archery experience, but they only drop a... Uh, you have no real use for raw rabbit legs, and they, only, and they don't even sell for money, so I'm not too worried about him. Elk and deer, on the other hand, are a different story. We need to be dropping those when we see them. Thistle branch, weight one-tenth of a pound, value one, for unknown effects. That's fine, just fine. Over here I see a torch bug. I'm gonna want to catch that. Torchbug Thorax added. Weight, one-tenth of a pound. Value, one. Here we have Purple Mountain Flower. Weight, one-tenth of a pound. Value, two. Solitude and join up with the Imperial Legion. We could really use someone like you. If the rebels have themselves a dragon, General Tullius is the only one who can stop them. Join the Imperial Legion. That's our first miscellaneous objective. We'll go ahead and tick it, just so... Every quest is marked on the map. Another thistle. Here's a blue mountain flower. Weight one-tenth of a pound, value two. Another blue mountain flower. Another blue mountain flower. And another pur- uh, blah, blah, And another purple mountain flower. I see a bunch of flowers up here to the right. We'll need to get those too. There's a purple mountain flower, a blue mountain flower. And 
here's a new one, a red mountain flower. Weighs one tenth of a pound, value two. Another red mountain flower, another red mountain flower. And over here at this tree stump, a Mora tapanella, a mushroom. Weight three tenths of a pound, value four, with four unknown effects. Hadvar decided to take off. Nope, he's still here for now. It's good. Here's another Mora Tapanella off to my left. Be sure to grab that. See up above Hadvar's head, there's a thistle branch to the right. I'll make sure I get that. Basically, I try to make sure I get all of the ingredients off of every path I take. And although they respawn, I don't farm them. If I happen to pass them again, I'll pick them up. But I make a point of getting everything, at least the first time I go by it. Here's a thistle right by the path to our left. A little ways farther off the path, there's another Mora Tapanella. Let's go get that. We haven't already gotten too far away from Hadvar. I think it's about to happen here. But maybe he'll surprise us. There's another Mora Tapanella. Oh, what do you know? He still stayed put. And suddenly, we're coming out onto an actual explorable path. Or, we're, we've been on a path, but we're coming out to a main road. See, there's a stone cairn marking the unkept trail we were just on. We'll follow Hadvar down the road this way. Let's grab both of those blue mountain flowers. I'll get those when I do take that path, so I'm ignoring it on purpose for now. There's another blue mountain flower. A thistle branch. There's another torch bug. Alright, so if we take the road that way, we could reach Helgen and Falkreef. The road we're on takes us to Riverwood. There's a blue mountain flower and a red mountain flower. There's another thistle branch up here to the right. Let's make sure to grab that. Oh, looks like Hadvar got tired of waiting and took off. That's fine. We don't miss much if we're... So here's the thistle, another blue mountain flower. Let's keep going down this path. He says something about Bleak Falls Barrow, if we're still with him. Says that he used to have nightmares of Draugr climbing into his window never liked living in the shadow of that ruin. That's pretty close to exact. Something along those lines. There's another thistle off the path a little ways here to the left. Be sure we get that.
follow the road around this little switch back. Yes, Hadvar is long gone. But he makes a remark when you get to the Guardian Stones. And he also says something based on which stone you choose. If you choose the Warrior Stone, he says, The Warrior! I knew you didn't belong on that cart the moment I saw you. If you choose the Thief, he says, You know, it's never too late to turn your life around. And I think he says the same thing if you take Mage. Anyway, you s already see a, another Thistle Branch up to our right. But before we get there, nestled in the rocks right here is a red mountain flower. Let's make sure we grab that and the thistle. And now we'll come up to the guardian stones. You can discover this location. It's not clearable, obviously. It's not a dungeon or anything of the sort. But there we have discovered the guardian stones. Two things here. On the back of the Thief Stone, we can harvest a Hanging Moss, which is new. Weighs three-tenths of a pound, value one, four unknown effects. And I'm going to activate the Thief Stone. But I'll show you what the others do before I actually activate it. This is the Warrior Stone. Those under the sign of the Warrior will learn all combat skills 20% faster. You may only have one sign blessing at a time. The Mage Stone. Those under the sign of the Mage will learn all magic skills 20% faster. You may only have one sign blessing at a time. And the Thief Stone. Those under the sign of the Thief will learn all stealth skills 20% faster. You may only have one sign blessing at a time. I'm just going to take the Thief Stone and pretty much leave it there because for my money, the slowest skills are all stealth skills, namely lockpicking and speech. Not to mention I'd like to be able to stop constantly sneaking as soon as possible and taking the Thief Stone will facilitate that. Uh, thief Stone in hand, let's move along. Grab a Thistle here on the left, there's another one up here on the right. We're coming up on one of the more tedious things we're going to have to do. Only if you have, I think it's Hearthfire, but it might be Dawnguard. But it's well worth doing. When you see, I think it's Hearthfire, but it might be Dawnguard, adds an ingredient to the game, Salmon Row or Salmon Eggs. You can only get it by catching jumping salmon out of the middle of the river or the rivers, the waterfalls, where you see jumping salmon. Catching them is a pain in the ass, especially if you're over-encumbered, but it's worth doing, because Salmon Row is capable of creating, by far, the most valuable potions in the game when you have it. Other ingredients don't even come close. So... On our left, we have a thistle branch and another blue mountain flower. It's a path going up to the right, which we'll ignore for now. Don't worry, we'll explore everything all in good time. Let's get another blue mountain flower. We'll worry about ingredients on that path when we're actually exploring it. For now, there's another thistle here on the left. I will grab that. I'm going to peek down at the water at the bottom of this waterfall. I don't think there's ever anything here because the water moves too fast. There's a clay deposit. Those are added in by the Hearthfire expansion. You can mine them. They will give you... they're infinite. They don't top out like ore veins do. And you need clay to build lots of things, but every property has a clay deposit right by it, so there's no need to mine in advance. There's another blue mountain flower. And another purple mountain flower.
And this waterfall has some jumping salmon. Which means it's time for us... Oh, sneak increased to 18. And we gain our first level. Delightful. At level 2, leveling up. When your level increases, you must choose to increase your health, magicka, or stamina. You can also select a new perk at this time or save it for later. Available perks are highlighted in each constellation. Like I've said, the crafting skills are my top priority. And so, first I'm going to take health. So my health is at 110. And I'm going to spend my first perk on Alchemist 1. Reason being that the amount your alchemy goes up when you make a potion is completely dependent on the strength of the potion you make. So, you'll, mani so you'll manage to max alchemy faster the sooner you invest in these perks. So, I'm going to make sure I have Alchemist 1. The same is not true of enchanting. It's technically true for smithing, in that creating more valuable items gives you more experience, but... No, I will go ahead and catch these salmon, but the ones that are swimming don't give you salmon row. They only give you salmon meat, which I actually think that's the first one I've got. Weight one-tenth of a pound, value three, restore two points of health. Well, let's... Oh. Well, I can't swim against the current. There's some more salmon swimming over there, and that's it. And I don't really need them, because the cell value is so low that any impact on my speech skill would be negligible. Sneak increased to 19. Delightful. What am I sneaking from, though? Oh, wolves. Because Hadvar ran so far ahead, those wolves are still alive. If you stick with him, he'll easily kill them for you. Alright. Gotta get a little closer, but I don't want to actually land in the water. Else the current will carry me away. Tough little balancing act you have to manage. Oh, come on. Oh, shoot. Well, I caught a couple, but I fell. So it goes. So I got some salmon meat, and I also got two salmon roe. Weight, two-tenths of a pound. Value, five. Four unknown effects. I'd like to keep those wolves alive so I can keep racking up a little sneak experience. Some more tapanella here. If I remember right, there's a whopping seven fish you're able to catch out of this particular waterfall. Just gotta hop back up and keep at it. I should note that much like uh, hawks, you can hit these fish and uh, you know they'll die and float off down the river but the obvious big downside is that you run the risk of losing them if you do that. If they get too far away from you, they'll disappear. Alright, here we are on the center island. Almost. Let's get in a spot that's actually secure. See if we can't grab some fish. There's one. There's another jumping farther out in the middle. Probably have to jump out there to grab it and make our way back up. Yes, we will. Let's try and time it right. Got him. Alright. Now there are a few more fish on the far side. Let's go get hold of those. Meanwhile, ah, sneak increased to 21. There's one, two red mountain flowers here on the path. Sneak 
increased to 22. Delightful. Make sure I can get to the far side this time. Come on, horse. You can do it. Maybe not. Oh, I would hate it if I were actually stuck. Not quite. I can go this way. Time to jumps going. Just a little bit. And we can make it to this side. Alright, let's count those fish. I see one, two. Okay, just two more. That's not so bad. Sneak to 23. Maybe I can just hop up this side. That'd be much easier if it were possible. Ah, yes. Oh, amazingly, that wasn't quite close enough. Okay, we're close enough. I just need to time the grab. All right, one more to go. And then this little bit of tedium will be over. Well, this one, there's really nothing for it except to just jump on out there and hope we get the timing right. Ah, I had him in my sights. Do it! Crud. Well, I'll level up after I catch the stupid fish. Assuming I'm able to... Okay, now nope, need to go back to the side and try again. Which is fine. So sneak hit 24, and I leveled up to 3. This one's simple, we'll take another point of health. And we can start smithing sooner than we can start enchanting. So I'm gonna grab steel smithing with my second perk. Not too shabby. Alright. Let's get that last stupid little fish. Oh, I had it in my sights. Just didn't quite grab it fast enough. You can see why this is so tedious. Maybe we can get it from the island. That might be easier. Let's see if I can try making that happen. Maybe I can just get it from here. Got it! Alright, sneak increase to 26. That's fine and dandy. We got the last fish. Oh, we're done messing around in here. Let's get back to the road. Still a lot of roaming to do. Ingredient gathering between here and Riverwood. I'm jumping so much because it makes you move just, you know, a touch faster, which is always nice. I know there's some wolves up here. I want to go ahead and fight them. Let's see if we can't convince them to come say hello. There they are. 
Come on, fellas. I won't hurt you too bad. Two-handed to 27. Excellent. Now, Wolf Pelt. Weight 1, value 10. You need these for Hearthfire. The specific number is 11. That's my first. I have 10 more Wolf Pelts to hoard. should probably actually take it. I should also note, I forgot to mention this, you need to have just one potion of healing. Can be any degree, a potion of minor healing is fine, but it can't be one you create yourself. You need to give it to Wujita in Riften in order to start the Skuma Dealer quest line, which ultimately allows you to become a Thane in that hold. So, I'll tag that one, as the, or one of those is the one I'm holding on to. Alright, two dead wolves means two more wolf pelts. I need eight more. And then I can start processing them into leather for smithing and whatnot. Although my end goal dragon scale armor requires a certain amount of leather and Typically, if there's something I need at the end, the first ones I find are the ones that I'll hoard. There's another blue mountain flower. There's another red. There's another red, and another red. And another red. There's an elk, or a deer, I'm not sure which, over across the river. I'll kill him when I'm on that side of the river. We'll get him before too long, don't worry. Here, right by the road, is another red mountain flower. Here is another blue. Blue mountain flower, I should say, because there are lots of different blue ingredients. It's always good to be specific. Here, right by the road, is another red mountain flower. There's a little bit going on up there, but that's right by the back exit of a dungeon we'll be doing, so we'll explore up there at that time. There's another red mountain flower right by the road. Another red mountain flower right by the road. Across the road, over here on the right, we've got purple mountain flower uh, a little ways up the hill there's the thistle branch stick to the road for now down here on the left you've probably already spotted another thistle branch I promise this is the most tedious part of the game. I'll never stay over encumbered again. We'll always be able to run after this intro section. There's a thistle branch. And there's more stuff here by the road. A blue mountain flower. Another blue mountain flower. Right by the road here, there's a red mountain flower. A little ways off the road, to the left, another red mountain flower, a purple mountain flower, a blue mountain flower. And down here, just a ways, another red mountain flower. And another red mountain flower. Now across the river, you see a glowing plant. That's a Nern root. Those are good for actual potions, but for a quest, Specifically, gathering some ingredients for Ingen Blackbriar, we need 20 Nern Root. There's my first one, 19 to go. Now, let's see about these dragonflies. 
They're going to be hard to catch with me being over encumbered. And I'll get as many as I can. I got a blue dart wing and an orange dart wing. The third one got away, but that's not too shabby. Now typically they share spawn points with the little fish you can use as ingredients, but I don't see any this time. So I got a blue dart wing. Weight one tenth of a pound, value one, four unknown effects. I got a Nern Root, weight two tenths of a pound, value ten, four unknown effects, and an orange dart wing, weight one tenth of a pound, value one, four unknown effects. Alright, onward. Stick to the road for now, but I see another dragonfly spawn point, so we'll be out to get as many of those as we can. Here is a slaughterfish nest. I got a slaughterfish egg. Weight two tenths of a pound, value three for unknown effects. Here on the left of the road is a purple mountain flower. Across the road. On my right is another purple mountain flower. And now let's swim out and go after those dragonflies. The water's shallow enough that the current shouldn't bother us, I think. I might be wrong. <laughs> we'll find out. An orange dart wing. Let's get this one. Got an orange dart wing. And got a blue dart wing. Checking for fish. I don't see any. Well, good. We got all three. That's always nice. Back to the road once again. Oh, we're so close, I can almost taste it. I bet you can too. But we got a little roaming to do up here to the right. See that thistle up there? Now, Riverwood itself, I'm actually going to leave alone for a little while. Except, I'm just gonna offload what I can and do a little crafting. And... I'll talk to Alvor and advance the quest that far. So here is a Mora Tapanella on a fallen tree to the left. There's another one in this stump, also on the left. And now we need to head up here and get a few more ingredients. Sneak increased to 27. We're in range of, uh, oh. Feindal is up there. Meet him before too long. Oh, I can't get up this way. That's okay. This is Riverwood right in front of us. We'll get it on the map. Offload what we can. Here's another road sign. Back the way we came. Well, first of all, we've discovered Riverwood. Most settlements aren't clearable. They're merely discoverable. But now we have Riverwood on the map. Delightful. So back the way we came, Riften and Helgen. The road through Riverwood takes us, well, to Riverwood as well as Markarth, Solitude, Whiterun, and Windhelm. So 
I'm going to grab these two thistle branches. One and two. There's a more tapanella over here. Just a few more ingredients to get before we actually go into Riverwood. And the first place I'm going to go is to the merchant to hopefully offload enough stuff to get my movement speed back. Then we'll go to Alvor's house, advance the main quest just a tiny bit, and get a very crummy, bare-bones place where I can leave some stuff. Which I will do, but we want to get our own space as soon as possible. And it won't take us long. First thing I want to do is backtrack to that thistle that I saw up above the road. That's all the way back over there. Yeah, Riverwood itself, as far as you know, stealing everything that's not nailed down, which I like to do, looting the houses and picking the locks and picking everyone's pockets for everything I can find, I'm going to save that until I have some space to actually store things. But for now, let's get this thistle branch. Swing back this way, you can see more tapanellas in this stump. I believe we can get two. Creepy, creepy, creepy. Let's grab that. There's one. And the other side should give us another. Just find the right spot to point. Uh, there's another Tapanella stump up here. Sneak increased to 29. And I gain a level. This level will also go to health, and we'll take Enchanter 1 with that perk. Well, that's all the crafting perks I have available at the moment. It won't take very long at all to get more. If you're this thorough about alchemy, it tends to very easily be the first one you finish maxing. And because I want to max crafting skills as soon as possible, I'll probably switch my guardian stone every time I max one of the al one of the crafting skills. So here's another Mora Tapanella. Now we can break left. There's some goodies down there, but we'll stay up top. You can kind of see how this hill is tiered. There's a thistle branch over here to the right. Let's make sure we get that. Another more tapanella up here straight ahead. And a thistle branch down there on the left. And another thistle branch right by the stump. So we'll get all three of those.
here we have more Tapanella. Is there a second one? Is the divided stump? No. We'll just grab that thistle. And we'll break back down the hill. For this thistle branch. Oh, we're so nearly done, I promise. Now we'll drop a level of sorts. Ahead to the left, you see a thistle branch. This fallen tree has a Mora Tapanella and two thistle branches right around it. And then there's a thistle to the right. And that'll be it, and we'll be ready to head into town. I'm actually glad we managed to wait until daytime. 8 a.m. means Alvor will be open for business. We got a thistle branch there to the left. More tapanella off of the actual log. Down at the base, I'm pretty sure there's a thistle. I guess I could be wrong. I am wrong. I misremembered. It's okay, just two thistles left to grab. One right here. And one up there. Sneak increase to 30. Ray. That's the prerequisite level for two of the perks I eventually want. Backstab and muffled movement. That getting them isn't a priority. Alright, now let's sneak forward into Riverwood. goes hard. Off to start his day at the lumber mill. There's Feindel. We saw him earlier. He gets up early and I guess he's supposed to be hunting but all he really does is wander around those hills for a while. And then he starts chopping wood at 8. Let's just head forward. I'm going to ignore the stuff inside the town until I'm ready to actually loot the town. So don't be alarmed that suddenly I'm skipping ingredients. Now their conversation isn't playing for whatever reason. Normally Hildy tells Sven that she saw a dragon. Sven tells her she's crazy. Dragons, that, dragons don't reel. He'll ignore them as well. As you can see, we're supposed to head into the house on the left. And in fact, I'm going to, because I want to sell to Alvor first the limited stuff he's willing to buy. And then everything else I'll sell to Lucan inside the Riverwood Trader. So, into Alvor's house we go. Looks like the conversation isn't going to play. Took us too long to get here. That's fine. Ain't every day we get visitors in Riverwood. Let me ask. So the key question is, do you have any supplies I could take? Of course. Take what you need. So he gives me an ale, an amethyst, a belted tunic, some bread, two carrots. I haven't even mentioned. 
what's in there. Idar Cheese Wedge, weight three tenths of a pound, value five, restore one point of health. Two Hunting Brew Meads, weight half a pound, value 20. Restore 20 stamina. Stamina regenerates 25% slower for 20 seconds. Now, we want to keep one Hunting Brew Mead in our inventory because you need it in a random encounter in order to get the best outcome. When you run into the Revelers, you can get a Charmed Necklace by giving them an extra bottle, and there's no other way to get it. An Iron Ingot. Now, for Hearthfire, we need an incredible... A ridiculous amount of iron. 771 ingots. On top of that, my own crafting desires require an additional 13 ingots. So, this is my first one. Not free to use it, won't be free to use them for a long time. A lockpick, three potions of minor healing, two red apples, weight one tenth, value three, restore two points of health, and finally a silver ring. My crafting cycle requires a total of five rings. The type of ring doesn't matter. So we will hoard that. That's our first one. All right. There's something you could do for me. For all of us here. The Yaro needs to know if there's a dragon on the loose. Riverwood is defenseless. We need to get word to Jarl Balgraf in Whiterun to send whatever soldiers he can. If you'll do that for me, I'll be in your debt. Completed. Talk to Alvor in Riverwood. New goal. You two make yourselves at home. Talk to the Jarl of Whiterun. Hadvar's uncle Alvor asked me to take word to the Jarl of Whiterun of the dragon attack on Helgen, and to ask the Jarl to send soldiers to protect Riverwood. Well, that's all fine and dandy. Let me just make sure I've examined everything he gave me. Belted tunic, armor zero, weight one, value two. Uh, he gave me ale, weight half a pound, value 5, restore 15 stamina. Stamina regenerates 30% slower for 30 seconds. I think that's it, as far as stuff I forgot to look at. Oh, an amethyst, weight one-tenth of a pound, value 120. Now, a note about storage. I'm going to leave some stuff in their house very temporarily until I get my own space. But we need to be certain that the container we use is safe. <clears throat> End tables, wardrobes, and dressers, and cupboards never respawn, so they are safe storage. Really Chests do respawn and are unsafe storage. So let's take out these miner's clothes, armor zero, weight one, value two. Everything I need to save, for whatever reason, goes in here. So, I don't need to save those, don't need to save those. For weapons, I want to save my best bow, so I'll save one longbow. I want to save my best one-handed sword. I'll save an, uh, oops, so I'll save an iron sword. For armor, I want to save the best light armor and wear the heavy. So, and I want to save my best shield. So I'll save my hide shield and my iron shield, and I'll save my imperial light helmet. Everything else, armor-wise, I'm still using. Let's save two fur gauntlets for eventual use in the crafting cycle. Let's save the novice hood and the novice robes to disenchant once I have access to an altar. Let's save the rough spun tunic and the silver ring, both of those also for the crafting cycle. Potions. Let's save one potion of minor healing for Wujita's quest. We can sell everything else. Let's save the Blackbriar Mead for Jarl Sidgear's quest. Go ahead and keep the hunting brew mead in my inventory starting now. Now I'm just going to drop all of the alchemy ingredients in. Well, no I'm not, because I'm going to do it in a crafting session. So every, anything I'm f not free to use goes in. I can keep bear claws. The only thing I need to put in and hold on to right now is the one Nern root and the two snowberries. I said the two snowberries. Everything else is fair game. I need my slaughter fish egg back. Books. No reason to hold on to any of these. And miscellaneous. 
I'm going to stash the amethyst, because jewelry is very useful in smithing. I'm going to stash the bear pelt for questing and for hearth fire. Stash the iron ingot, needed in the crafting cycle. And stash the three wolf pelts, all needed for hearth fire. Alright, that got us down to 569 out of 300. Um, are you in trouble? Now let's Maybe sell whatever... Need, Within reason, of course. We need to let Alvor get to his forge. Otherwise he won't give us his uh, merchant dialogue. Can take him a little bit, that's okay. I'm gonna get out of his way though, otherwise he'll waste time yakking at me some more. So currently here in Riverwood, we have access to a tanning rack, a grindstone, a workbench, and a forge, which is almost everything we need to smith, but there's no smelter here, so ore is useless to us until we get to Whiterun. There's also an alchemy lab we can use inside the Sleeping Giant Inn. We still have no access to an arcane enchanter. Just FYI on all that. Alright, what have you got they for sale? Look. Barter. Items above the divider line belong to the vendor. Items below the line belong to you. To buy or sell an item, select it and press E. Now, for anything in here... Well, anything I don't have equipped is fair game to sell. So, one, two, three, four battle axes, one, two, three daggers, one, two, three maces, one, two, three iron swords, one, two iron war axes, one, two, three, four iron war hammers, and one, two long bows. Twelve. Now, it's important to sell things one at a time because every transaction gives you speech experience. 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0 for boots. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0 for gauntlets. Hide shield, imperial light armor, imperial light boots. And 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0 stormcloak cuirasses. And we're not going to sell him our lockpicks. Lo and behold, our full movement speed is restored. Let's hit the Riverwood Trader now. Well, one of us has to do something. I said no. No adventures, no theatrics, no thief chasing. Well, what are you going to do then, huh? Let's hear it. We are done talking about this. Don't even think about it. All right. Well, I don't know what you overheard, but the Riverwood Trader is still open. Feel free to shop. I'm going to ignore everything else, but I'm going to ask him if he sells spells. I think I have a few old spell books laying about. If you want more, you'll have to go to the College of Winterhold. That's fine. We just we want to be able to start learning or raising those magic skills as soon as possible. So, nothing there to sell. We can sell him the belted tunic, the foot wraps, the miner's clothes, and the ragged robes. On potions, we can go ahead and sell him everything. So, one, two, three, four, five, frostbite venom, potion of health, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero, potions of minor healing, and speech increased to 21. Excellent. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Potions of Minor Magicka. Potion of Minor Stamina. Ale. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Alto Wine. One, two, Bread. One, two, Cabbage. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Carrot. Idar Cheese Wedge. Five, Green Apple. Keep one Haunting Brew Mead for your inventory. Don't forget. Let's sell the Pheasant Breast. Three Potatoes. Three Raw Rabbit Legs. Two Red Apples. One, two, three, four. Sacks of Flour. Eight, seven... Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Salmon meat and two wine. Keep all your ingredients. I'll sell him all five of these books, and I'll sell him all this clutter. The baskets, 
Even if you give something away, you still get a little bit of speech experience for it, so it's worth doing. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, three. Keep your lock picks. Skull, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, and two wooden ladles. All right. Next. I better Oops. get back to cleaning the store. What a mess. I almost forgot. Well, no, I didn't. Miscellaneous objective. Visit the College of Winterhold. We'll put that on there. Now. Let's move over to the Sleeping Giant Inn. What do you want? Get the alchemy tutorial quest done right quick. Let them chat Can with each other. Hard not to. The ale is going bad. We need to get a new batch. Did you hear me? Yep, ale's going bad. I guess you don't have potatoes in your ears after all. Just make sure we get a fresh batch in soon. We You're got room. Visitor, ben Need a room? Talk to Delphine. Just can I use the alchemy lab? Long as you clean up. You know how to use it, right? Mix a couple of ingredients together, see what happens. A little weed and blister wart makes a healing potion, if you didn't know. We have plenty of ingredients for sale, too. Drink for Let's the see if he has anything I want. And more importantly, if I can afford it. Oh my. Well, I'm not gonna spend Until money on time. ingredients just now. So, Alchemy Lab, you can create potions and poisons by combining two or more ingredients that share a common effect. Experiment with different ingredients to learn their effects. Pretty straightforward. Now, like I mentioned, I have an iOS app that helps me calculate what my best potions are. So, I just need to enter the ingredients into there right quick. So, I have one Bear Claw, two Blue Dart Wing, 17 Blue Mountain Flower, Five bone meal. I do know this is tedious, and I do apologize. Elves ear, frost miriam, two garlic, hanging moss, twelve mora tapanella, three orange dart wing, eight purple mountain flower, nineteen red mountain flower. Four Rock Warbler Egg, Six Salmon Row, Ten Salt Pile, Two Skeever Tail, no I don't actually want to quit, One Slaughterfish Egg, Seven Spider Egg, Twenty-four Thistle Branch, and Two Torchbug Thorax. All right, now with that, we can start making potions. First one, bear claws, hanging moss, and an orange dart wing. Now look at everything we learned. I got... Now I need to keep track of which effects I've learned in my notes. So for bear claws, I got damage magicka regen. Fortify one-handed and fortify health. Pretty good. And restore stamina. Okay, we got all four effects of bear claws. For hanging moss, we learned damage magic regen, fortify one-handed, and fortify health. And for Orange Dart Wing, we learned one and one alone. Restore Stamina. That's okay. Now that one potion bumped us up from 15 to 16 on Alchemy Skill. Pretty awesome. Okay. 
as you can see. Our next potion will be, oh, completed, craft a potion. So blue mountain flower, bone meal, and spider egg. So, start at the bottom of the list this time. On spider egg, I just learned damage magicka regen and damage stamina. Up on bone meal, I've learned Fortify Conjuration and Damage Stamina. And on Blue Mountain Flower, I have learned Damage Magicka Regen and Fortify Conjuration. I can make five of these bad boys. And in doing so, my alchemy skill will jump to 19. Cool, cool, cool. What should we do next? Blue Mountain Flower, Elves Ear, and Spider Egg. That gives us Fortify Marksman on the Elves Ear and the Spider Egg. Not bad. Let me make note of that. This will speed up as my list of unknown effects gets smaller. I promise. Alright, next up. Garlic, orange dart wing, and slaughterfish egg. Okay, let's start with slaughterfish egg. I got fortify pickpocket, resist poison, lingering damage health, and fortify stamina. We learned all four effects of the Slaughterfish Egg on that potion. Awesome. On Orange Dartwing, I got Fortify Pickpocket and Lingering Damage Health. And on Garlic, I got Resist Poison and Fortify Stamina. Very cool. That also raised my alchemy skill to 20, which is the prereq for two alchemy perks I need, Alchemist 2 and Physician. So those will be the next perks I take. But I don't have a perk point to put there just now. Next, we're doing Blue Mountain Flower, Rock Warbler Egg, and Spider Egg, which gives me Restore Health on the Blue Mountain Flower. I can get that in my notes. Blue Mountain Flower, we have Restore Health, and on Rock Warbler Egg, we got Damage Stamina and restore health. Fun. Next potion. Frost Miriam, Purple Mountain Flower, and Skeever Tail. Start on Skeever Tail. I got Damage Stamina Regen. And that's it. On Purple Mountain Flower, I got Resist Frost, and Fortify Sneak. And on Frost Miriam, I got three effects. I got Damage Stamina Regen, Fortify Sneak, and Resist Frost. Very cool. That also sufficed to raise my Alchemy skill to 21, and I think it's even going to give me a perk point. Yes, we gained a level. So the first one I'll take is Alchemist 2. Let's do that before we even make any more potions. Let's quit and go to the level up screen. Take health and Alchemist 2. 
Next rank, potions and poisons you make are 40% stronger. Excellent. I'm gonna go ahead and do a manual save right quick with all those potions made. Next potion, garlic, salt pile, and torch bug thorax. What did we learn? On garlic, I got regenerate magicka. Down on salt pile, I got regenerate magicka and weakness to magic. And on torch bug thorax, I got fortify stamina and weakness to magic. Not too shabby. Can only make one of those. Next, we are going to do salmon row, salt pile, and red mountain flower. That gets me on the salmon row, it gets me regenerate magicka and fortify magicka. And on the red mountain flower, it gets me fortify magicka. I can make six of these. Let's see where my alchemy skill ends up when that's done. That will boost it to 23. Not bad. Next, I'm going to do blue dartwing, mora tapanella, and orange dartwing. We get lingering damage health on mora tapanella. And on blue dartwing, we get fortify pickpocket. That's the only one of those we can make. Next, purple mountain flower, thistle branch, and torch bug thorax. On the purple mountain flower, we got lingering damage magicka, and restore stamina. That's all of the effects for purple mountain flower. For the thistle branch, we got resist frost. And on the Torch Bug Thorax, we got Lingering Damage Magicka and Restore Stamina, and that's all four effects for the Torch Bug Thorax. Very good. Now, I... oh, I can't only make one of those, unfortunately. Next, Purple Mountain Flower and Thistle Branch. Six of these, sufficient to raise Alchemy to 24. waiting for my calculator to work. Blue dart wing, rock warbler egg, and salt pile. We get weakness to magic on rock warbler egg. And on blue dart wing we get restore health. Very nice. Next, we're going to do Blue Mountain Flower, Rock Warbler Egg, and Salt Pile. Learn nothing from that. We will do more Tapanella, Red Mountain Flower, and Skeever Tail, which gets us Restore Magicka on more Tapanella. On Red Mountain Flower, it gets us Restore Magicka and Damage Health. And on Skeever Tail, it gets us Damage Health. Sorry about that hiccup. People talking to me. Happens. And the last batch of potions we'll make in this first session is Mora Tapanella and Red Mountain Flower. Doesn't teach us anything new, but we are able to boost Alchemy to 25 on the last one. 
So with that, we can quit alchemy, can save with all that tedium done with. Now the only person who will buy potions is Lucan Valerius. Well, let's go visit him. Are you playing hide and seek? You're kind of fuzzy. What's wrong with you? We'll sell him whatever we can. The Riverwood Trader is. Take a look. And just go to potions. Speech to 22. He has 82 gold left. Now he only has 4. Well, let's buy some things from him. Namely, spell books. He sells 6 spell tomes. Clairvoyance. Weight 1, value 151, shows the path to the current goal. That's an illusion spell. He sells Frostbite, weight 1, value 142. A blast of cold that does 8 points of damage per second to health and stamina. That's destruction. Uh, Fury, illusion, weight 1, value 130, 130. Creatures and people up to level 6 will attack anything nearby for 30 seconds. Lesser Ward, Restoration, Weight 1, Value 136, Increases Armor Rating by 40 points and negates up to 40 points of spell damage or effects. Oak Flesh, Alteration, Weight 1, Value 133, Improves the Caster's Armor Rating by 40 points for 60 seconds, and Raise Zombie, Conjuration, Re weight 1, value 148, reanimate a weak dead body to fight for you for 60 seconds. So, we'll get all those spells, and now that we've spent some money, we'll sell him some more potions. Speech to 23, 40 gold, 10, 0. Now, let's see what else he sells that's useful. A bear pelt. Why not? Lord, I do need it, so I'll buy that. It'll drop my number of bear pelts needed to 19. Now, let's see what I can sell him. 65 gold. 3 gold. Alright, let's see what else he has. A Corundum Ingot. That's useful. For Hearthfire, you need a lot of those. You need 105 Corundum Ingots. So there's my first one, down to 104. Let's sell him some more potions. 38. Speech to 24. Excellent. Now he's got a Deer Hide. I need 15 of those. So now I need 14. And let's see... Alright. Glass. We do need that. Specifically, I need... 61 glass. Let's just go ahead and buy all 12 off of him one at a time. 61 minus 12 is 49. I need to find 49 more glass. Now let's sell him some more potions. A goat hide. I need a few of those. I need... Let me find it. I need eight goat hides. So with that one, the number drops to seven. And just sell him a few of these. Goat horns. I need eight. 87 of these. He's got 10. That'll drop my total to 77. Let's buy them all. And now we can sell him some more potions. Horse hide. That I don't need. Iron ingot. Three more. That's good. I need so many more of those, but 
I'm buying for the crafting cycle first, so I need nine iron ingots to ultimately make my dragon scale armor. Without a smelter, iron ore is useless to me, so I'm going to leave that alone for now. I mean, it it's not like it'll never be useful to me, but I prefer not to spend money on it until it is. Or a calcum ingots. In addition to being useful in smithing, you actually need six of these for hearth fire. So I'll buy both of those. Now I only need four. I think now I'll be able to sell him all remaining potions. Perfect. Okay. Damn. Now there's just a little more to do. Going to leave the things I just bought and the ingredients I couldn't use in Alvar's wardrobe here. So the bear pelt, the corundum ingot, the deer hide, the glass, the goat hide, the goat horns, the iron ingots, and the ore calcum ingots. Not the lock pick. I hate it when it automatically moves it like that. It does it rather frequently. Oh, let's learn these spells. Duh. S stash those ingredients in there. Need to keep that. And we're using everything else. Perfect! Now one more thing before we head out. Let's buy a pickaxe from Alvor. Take what you need, my friend. So we can mine ore when we're out in the world. Yourself or deal some damage. It'll be in weapons. Let's get the pickaxe. Mm -hmm. Costs 15 gold. I'm gonna go ahead and favorite it. I'm also going to favorite some of these spells I just got. Namely, namely I'm going to favorite Flames, Fury, Oak Flesh, and Raise Zombie. These are the ones that I'm kind of going to use as I go, just in order to raise some skills. And now, before I end this video, I'm going to make my way all the way back to the spot where we emerged from the Helgen Keep. Sneaking, sneaking, sneaking on our merry way. Back, back, back. I'm going to get Ray's zombie ready, though. Reason being, we can get a little conjuration experience when we get back to those wolves I killed. Hopefully all three bodies are still here. Let's raise one. Your magicka is magicka low. Your magicka is low, which may prevent you from casting spells. Drink a potion or wait for it to recover. That's fine. Raise wolf number one. Let's take flames out of my left hand. That way I can punch him four times. Oh. No, I can't. He reanimated with way less than max health. So that didn't give us any conjuration experience, but that's okay. We'll try the other two. Maybe we'll have better luck. Come on, Hoss. Let him get up. No dice. I wonder if they patch... Well, no, because they shouldn't be reanimating with no health, because... The idea is you reanimate them to fight for you, and their health bar should be full. Uh, I'm encountering some glitches here. It's okay, I suppose. Let's try it on the last one. And if it doesn't work, oh well. Ah, here we go. So on the fourth punch, he'll turn hostile. And Conjuration will raise two levels to 17. We'll finish him off with our greatsword. 
and we leveled up. So put another point in health, and I will take physician in the alchemy tree. Potions you mix that restore health, magicka, or stamina are 25% more powerful. That will help us in leveling, but really it's only there to be a prerequisite. Unfortunately, we have... There's nothing we can do right now to be productive with our magicka. I don't have any of the spells that don't require a target. We'll just creep right back up. Notice how much faster we're going. It's exciting. Up we go. Now this is a spawn point for a random encounter. Sometimes you'll run into one of the game's many random events here. It looks like it's clear for me at this juncture. A lot of those are triggered by being a certain level, and I think our level is still too low. There's a bunny. When I say all the way back, I mean all the way back. So here's where we got to the main road. We're going to take this trail back up to where we emerged from Helgen Keep with our buddy Hadvar. Alright, well this is just too tempting. Flame on, bunny! We'll take his leg. Wonder if this is any good. Well, we can reanimate him, but we won't be able to get any conjuration experience out of the deal. Alas. I want my greatsword to be my default. Ah, look! Butterfly wing, two. Weight one-tenth of a pound, value three. Four unknown effects. All the way back up to the tippy top, the cave exit. From Helgen Keep. Now we can explore the area between here and Riverwood much more properly, taking our time to hit the side areas and see what there is to be seen now that we're not over encumbered. So I'm gonna make a save right here as well as a quick save and call this a video. This has been Let's Play Skyrim. We offloaded, finally. We're now basically free to explore, and that's all we're going to do. Quest-wise, this playthrough will move at a very, very, very slow pace, because the idea I have is just to explore every nook and cranny of the game as we go. So we'll start exploring in earnest next time. Until then, thank you for watching, and goodbye.